Today, we have another installment of the Look For Less Challenge. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget, as well as extreme before and after room transformations. If that's something you enjoy, please make sure to hit like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. So today is another Look For Less challenge. If you're not familiar with the Look For Less challenge, it is a challenge that I started a few years ago. And basically it's where we take high-end home decor pieces from very expensive stores and recreate them for a whole lot less. I host this challenge every other month on my channel and I invite those have YouTube channels or even those of you at home to take a piece that you have been eyeing but is a little bit out of your budget and do your best to recreate it to look almost exactly like the original. If you join this month, I have a playlist in my description box where you can add your video. And for all of you who are just looking for inspiration and maybe new channels to discover, make sure to click that link and check out all of the other videos of everyone who entered this month. I love everything at Serena and Lily. I just don't love their prices. So here is my shot at recreating some of their home decor pieces. So for my very first look for less dupe, I am gonna be tackling this Brighton floor lamp. And it's on Serena and Lily's website for $898. The base of the lamp is a nice smooth white finish with beautiful detail work and you can get the lampshade in two options. You can get it white or you can do a natural wicker lampshade, which is more my taste. But at that price, let's be honest, the lamp better do more than just turn on and off. And as luck would have it, I would be walking down my Goodwill a, a few weeks ago and I came across this really nice floor lamp it was in actually really good condition the base was wood it had a nice detail work just like my inspiration piece and i did get it for twelve dollars and 99 cents which is a little pricey but given the fact that it is a floor lamp i thought it was still a good deal so the first thing i needed to do was remove the lampshade and get it prepped for painting I heated the price tag a little bit with my hair dryer so that it would come off a little bit easier and I used some Goo Gone to remove any excess residue that was still remaining on the actual stand. Next I used some painter's tape to cover the bulb socket on the top of it as well as the cord at the base of the lamp. Next, I took some spray paint and I'm using Rust-Oleum's white in a gloss. I started at the bottom of the lamp and I use small light strokes when spray painting and then I began to work my way up the base. I gave this three coats overall, and since it was a bright and sunny day, it didn't take very long between coats for the paint to dry. Once everything was nice and dry, I removed all of the painter's tape. Now, since the original shade had a built-in harp, like already attached to the shade, I had to purchase this other one. And the reason I'm showing you all this is because this one's pretty cool. I found it on Amazon and I'll link to it below, but this one allows you to adjust the height of your harp, which is something that I've actually never seen. It has these cute little areas where you can click the long piece and shorten it or lengthen it as much as you want. Now the kit also comes with several bases and this is where you're gonna like hook the harp on and as you can see this one doesn't work because the little socket is already in there. This one is too wide and of course it came with a third one and this one was just right. So I like that about this too. It definitely gives you options no matter what kind of thrifted lamp you may find. 
Then all you do is take the piece that comes with your lamp that screws directly onto your light bulb socket and just screw it down and it will hold that little base in place. Next, for the lampshade, I was able to find this lampshade made from seagrass at my local at home for $40. Yes, this is a pretty big splurge for a look for less, but this is pretty typical as far as price is concerned. Now, I went ahead and put this on on a higher setting just to show you all that you don't want to see any of that light bulb socket, again, which makes this little harp so handy. All you have to do is push them up and go to the very first setting and as you'll see this looks so much better now the lamp harp came with this little finial that goes on top but honestly it was small so I decided to go ahead and buy this one it's $4.99 and I bought it when I bought the lampshade and it just goes so much better with the lampshade color and it really pulls the look together because that one was just too small for my taste and here is how this first dupe turned out Alright, so let's see how we did. The original lamp cost $898, and no, that is not a typo. And my cost $75, which is still a bit of a splurge for a look for less. However, I bought the lamp for $13, the lampshade for $40, the finial for $5, the harp for $12, and the spray paint bottle for $5. Still, that is an $823 savings for pretty much the same look. All right, for the next Look for Less dupe, we are going to be tackling the South Beach Tray, which on the Serena and Lily website, it goes for $298 larger trays go for even more and it's basically a glossy white tray with a grass cloth bottom so i purchased this tray at hobby lobby a couple of years ago and i only paid four dollars for it on clearance and honestly i've been using it to store school paper for my kids all this time it had a couple of rough edges from just general use so i decided to give it a light sanding before spray painting it Taking the leftover of the paint that I used for the lamp, I began to spray paint the tray. I wanted to make sure that all the edges got white spray paint on them, so I started it upside down and then I flipped it later to get the top portion. Now, while I will be covering the bottom of the tray to match the grass cloth look of the original, I did go ahead and spray paint the bottom of the tray because I didn't want that ampersand to show through anything that I applied on the top. So for the next step, I'll be using this faux grass cloth contact paper that I purchased on Amazon. And it's very similar to the one that I used on the free Facebook Marketplace side table flip that I shared a little while ago. This one though is a little bit darker when it comes to the grass cloth color, but it's very similar in quality as the other one. Next, all I did was take the measurements of the inside of the tray, and I actually did this to both this inside top portion that you see me measuring right here as well as the underneath portion. I wanted this tray to look as finished and polished as possible and I didn't want the bottom just to have the overspray from the spray painting of the sides. I wanted it to have the grass cloth as well. I used scissors to cut my pieces from the roll, but then I did use a straight edge and my box cutter to make a nice crisp straight line for the edges. I made sure to dry fit everything before I began applying the contact paper. 
And then of course I took my time in putting the contact paper on. Now this part can be pretty tedious, but I take a small portion of the contact paper off at the end first. And as I continue applying, I continue pulling the backing from the contact paper. So I'm trying to smooth everything out first and sometimes I use my Cricut spatula. It really does help. And I just smooth everything out before removing that backing. And it really does help give me a nice, smooth, wrinkle-free surface. I did the exact same thing to the bottom of the tray and here you can see the little felt pads that I add to the bottom of the tray so that it protects any surfaces that I put my tray on. And here is how it turned out. So let's see how we did. The original tray cost $298. My tray cost $4 from Hobby Lobby and I bought the $7 roll of faux grass cloth. And for those who are very picky and want all of the numbers, I even added a dollar from the spray paint that I used that was left over from the lamp. So it came to a total of 12 whopping dollars to recreate this tray. For dupe number three, we're going to be recreating this ombre serving set also from Serena and Lily and it goes originally for $48 but it's on sale for $40. Now as far as Serena and Lily goes, this is not that expensive but $40 for some utensils that will help toss a salad is still overpriced. So I purchased these wooden utensils from Dollar Tree and I actually shared this in my recent shopping haul. Now, of course, you can use any thrifted ones or even ones that you have at home. However, I wanted to try these on these because I didn't know how it's going to turn out. And you'll see that one actually turned out a little bit better than the other, but I think that was actually my fault and I'll show what I'm talking about. So for this, I am using DIY paint and the reason I'm using this one is because I'd already used this color and I had this available and two, because DIY paint only has nine ingredients and they're all non-toxic and perfectly safe. So I think the initial mistake that I did was adding a little bit of black to that blue, which is called Hey Sailor. I wanted it to be a little bit deeper and darker like the original set, but honestly, I should have just done Hey Sailor by itself because it didn't mix well in some places as you will see. And honestly, it's not that the paint didn't mix well. <laughs> I think it was just me because I wasn't paying attention and I probably didn't see that it was streaky in some areas because this paint does apply darker and then it lightens up as it dries, but I probably just didn't notice it when it was dark and wet on the spoons. So here you see me just applying a smooth long strokes along the base of the utensil. Now I go up a little bit further than I probably should have. I probably should have started the ombre right here where I'm painting right now, but I did take it up a little bit further. Now this next part took a little bit of trial and error. I started rubbing a damp cloth to see if I can remove some of the paint but it started spreading it in a weird way and then it would remove way too much. So instead of doing that, what I did was I would spray some water on the top part, getting that paint really, really wet. And then I would kind of spread it and then dab it, dab it with that damp cloth so that I wouldn't wipe the paint away, but then I would kind of just pick it up with my cloth and that started to give me that ombre effect at the very top of the utensils as you see here. And again, I would go back in sometimes and retouch up with some paint from my paintbrush if I took too much, but this was the method that kind of worked the best. 
Now, in order to seal it, I decided to use some big top after show and as you can see here the paint had lightened up when it dried and i needed to seal it because diy paint if you apply water to it without it being sealed it will reactivate and it will start coming off that's just the properties of the paint so i began to apply big top to the entire bottom portion now if you just wish to use these as decoration you can definitely use wax to seal the paint below but Big Top does offer more protection for your finish in this case. Now, if I were to use this for actual food prep, this was what I was talking about when I mentioned I should have done the fade away a lot lower on the handles because then it would have been a lot further away from the top portion that would touch the food. And I honestly think that bringing it down a little bit, it would be totally fine to use if you were gonna serve salad or anything like that. And so this is something to keep in mind if you have thought about doing something like this. And so I let these cure overnight and here is how they turned out. And here's where you can see the color difference on the utensils. The square utensil actually looks a lot more even than the spoon. And so here's how we did. The originals were $40 and the ones that I recreated only cost me $2.50. To be honest with you, I barely used any paint <laughs> and these were from Dollar Tree. Of course, I like to use inexpensive things like this whenever trying new painting techniques because sometimes they just don't work out. But all in all, I think it was a pretty good try at trying to recreate that ombre look at the very top of the spoon. And I think it was a very good learning experience. All right, for the final dupe, we're going to be doing the Dell Sir candle holders from Serena and Lily. And this is what they look like. This small one is $198. And there was even more. The middle one was $298. And the large one was $400. I'm not joking. Now, it does have really small beads all the way around it. And no matter how much I wanted to recreate that look, I was not going to do that. I'm a patient crafter, but I'm not that patient. And I tried to recreate the taller ones. And I guess this is where the money comes in because it's very hard to get that structurally sound. And I wasn't able to do that. So we're just going to focus on the small one because I do think it's a very unique shape. And it's a very cute candle holder. And for this to start, we're going to be using these tread wheels from Hobby Lobby. And this package costs $4.99. It comes with four of them. We're also going to be using some wooden rings. And this is actually left over from when I created these beautiful poinsettia napkin rings for my Christmas in July video. I had a package that had several sizes and we're going to be using two of these. Now you see more rings in this video because I did try to recreate one of the larger candle holders and that didn't work out. If you do want to try it, yourself, <laughs> and as you can see, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. You definitely can use miter shears to cut the wooden rings and feed them like a chain with a smaller one in between if you want to try the larger candle holders. The problem is, is that all you can do is pretty much glue them together. There's not much else you can do. You can't really attach it with a nail because first of all, you can't get in there even with a small nail gun or a small hammer. So I did try to glue them. It didn't work. So for the smaller ones that I was able to recreate, what I did was I took my miter shears and I cut a sliver off the edge of the round. And the reason I did this was because I needed it to stand straight and flat on the surface so it can have better adhesion when I glued it on to the bottom base. So obviously for the smaller candle holder, you're just going to need one large wooden ring and then the two tread wheels. Then of course you're going to do the same thing to the other side of that wooden ring to create another flat surface for the top portion of the candle holder. 
and you can use a mini saw and a sanding block to make any adjustments and make it even more smooth. Now, the bottom tread wheel needs to be face down so that there's more surface area that you can glue the wooden ring on. The one on the top needs to face up. That means that little indentation that it has needs to face upwards again so that the underneath portion has a more surface area to glue and attach onto the wooden ring. And as you can see here, I actually tried, but again, it was just so hard to get these attached to each other. Now I would probably recommend wood glue for this, but you can definitely use a hot glue gun and it does hold pretty well. Do the base first and then come in and do the top. And I even use a level just to make sure that it was nice and even on all sides. So next, once the glue had dried, it was time to paint and I decided to use White Swan from a DIY paint. And I decided to go with this instead of the spray paint because this actually has a better coverage on raw wood than spray paint does. Sometimes raw wood likes to suck up the paint, but this one, as you can see, has really good coverage and I only needed to do one coat of paint. And that was pretty much it. All I had to do was let the paint dry and here is how it turned out. So here is how we did. The original small candle holder was $198 and I was able to get two for just six. That's five for the tread wheels that came in a pack of four and then those two rings. And while I didn't add the beads to get that texture because I wanted to keep my sanity, I did think that we were able to pull off the general look and that coastal feel that they had so much. Well, that is it for this month's Look For Less Challenge. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below which one of these DIYs was your favorite. Thank you all, as always, for joining me on this fun challenge. I can't wait to see what everyone created in the playlist. The next Look For Less Challenge is going to be in September. I will see you all next week with another home decor and DIY video. In the meantime, you can check these videos out right here for more inspiration and I will see you soon. Until then, adios.